Okay, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how cannibalism is connected to tithing in the Bible. We know from Genesis uh, 14, 18 through 20, and Genesis 28 through 22 that Abraham and Jacob both tithe, and that means 10%, so they, they give a tenth to Abraham, gives it to Melchizedek, which is debated on who he is. I personally think he's either the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ or an angel. And then Jacob gives it to the house of the Lord when he makes an altar. So, we have no purpose. There is no reasoning or explanation given on what the tithe is and why it's required that it's 10% or anything along those lines. We do know that it is a serious matter for Jews that they do tithe, because in Malachi 3, which we'll turn to, let's go to Malachi 3 in verses 9 through 10. All right, Malachi 3, 9 says, Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. So, we see that for them not tithing, they are considered cursed, because they have robbed God. So the tithe is that serious to the Lord. And if we read in Leviticus 27.30 real fast, Leviticus 27.30 says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. So that's why it's considered robbing God if these Jews do not tithe, because it is considered the Lord's. So... We see that the Lord takes us very seriously. We see that it's nothing to joke around about or anything along those lines. So let's see exactly uh, how the tithe plays into uh, future events and everything along those lines real fast. So we see that in Exodus 16.32, we'll read that real fast. This is about the Jews in the wilderness eating manna. All right, Exodus 16.32 says, And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commandeth, fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. So, where he fed them in the wilderness. So eating is involved. And he says, to fill an omer. Now we read in verse 36 of the same chapter. Now an omer is the tenth part of an ephah. So a tenth is a tithe. So the tithe is connected with eating manna in the wilderness in this verse for the Israelites, the Jews. All right, now I want to look at a very peculiar verse in the Bible. Let's look at Isaiah 6, 11 through 13 real fast. All right, starting in verse 11, it says, Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant. And the house is without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten, as a teal tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So the holy seed is what's eaten. A tenth of the holy seed is what's eaten there in verse 13. What exactly is the holy seed? So, let's look at Ezra 9 verse 2 real fast. Alright, Ezra 9 verse 2 says, For they have taken of their daughters for themselves, and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. So that right there shows, and if you read in verse 1, it's talking about Jews. It's talking about Israel, the people of Israel and the priests. In the, so see, in, ver, in chapter 9, verse 1, then connect it with verse 2. The holy seed is Jewish people. It's the Jews. So that's the holy seed being eaten in Isaiah 6, 11 and 13. 11 through 13. Let's read uh, Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 1 for a uh, picture of things to come. Real fast. It says, And the rulers of the people dwelt at Jerusalem, 
The rest of the people also cast lots to bring one of ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city, and nine parts to dwell in other cities. So we see right there that people are the tithe. So literal people, actual humans, are tithed right there to stay in Jerusalem. There's a tenth of them staying in Jerusalem. And that's a picture of things to happen in the tribulation, which we'll get into a little later. Let's uh, read Psalm 79, verse 1 through 3 real fast. This is about the tribulation. O God, the heathen, the Gentiles, are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. So that looks like a mass slaughter. A mass slaughter of Jewish tribulation saints. So we see that there is going to be tribulation saints in Israel that stay in Jerusalem and are literally slaughtered by the Antichrist. Let's read Revelation 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So these people were beheaded. These tribulation saints that didn't bow down to the world system, the Antichrist system. Okay, so let's read uh, Revelation 6, 9 real fast as well. All right, Revelation 6, 9 says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, so this is during the tribulation, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So these Jewish tribulation saints are killed at an altar, and they're beheaded. So, let's go ahead and look back at Leviticus 1, verse 15, real fast. All right, Leviticus 1, 15 says, And the priest shall bring it unto the altar, just like the Jewish people's souls were under the altar when they had their heads cut off, and wring off his head and burn it on the altar, and the blood thereof shall be wrung out, at the side of the altar. So this is Old Testament sacrifice done by the, the priests, okay? So the same thing is going to be happening during the tribulation to literal humans, to Jewish people during the tribulation. So let's go to Matthew 24, verse 15 real fast. This is Jesus speaking, talking about the tribulation. And this is what he says. He says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, and then he says, Whoso readeth, let him understand. So he throws that in to make you pay attention. So this is something serious. So the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet that stands in the holy place. So the Old Testament sacrifices that I just read to you in Leviticus 1.15 where they cut the head off for the offering, the sacrifice, was done at the altar in the holy place. So it looks like the Antichrist stands in the holy place and cuts the head off of Jews. And I think that is the abomination of desolation that was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. And that's when he calls himself God and everything else the Antichrist is going to do. But it doesn't look like it just ends with the sacrifice. It looks like if we go back to Isaiah 6, 11 through 13, real fast, we'll read it one more time. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, so there's a tenth of the Jews still there, and it shall return and shall be eaten, okay? So it doesn't look like it's just beheading and sacrifice. It looks like these Jews are literally eaten. Their flesh is eaten, their blood is drank, something along those lines. It looks like something way more sinister is actually going on here. 
And we can't even fathom how evil the Antichrist is really going to be. There's no way of telling, but I think the Bible, uh, when comparing Scripture with Scripture, is pretty clear that he's going to be awful, and I think he's going to be sacrificing a tenth of the uh, Jewish tribulation saints by beheading them at the altar, and cannibalism is going to be involved. This is, was a wild, This was a wild study. I know it was really deep, I know it was really uh, controversial and dark, but the Bible is controversial and dark, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you for watching, and uh, I look forward to bringing you more content, more videos, and uh, thank you and God bless.